What's, What's good, good family? family? It's your boy Cam. It's your girl Kay. And we are back with another video. Not today, today, today. We are gonna give y'all another reaction to Eminem. The interview. Yep. Kamikaze interview. Part two. Y'all asked for it. We giving it to you. Gave us 100 likes. Get this video to 200 likes <laughs> for the third part. We gonna keep yeah. testing y'all, man. That was dope, man. Thanks for the hundred likes. Thank you. you shit in my eye. For all the support. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Subscribe to the channel. Be sure post notifications. Smash that like button. Up, 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 up. Watch this video all the way through. We appreciate you. And let's get it. Let's go. Let's get it. Shout out to the trolls on our channel. <laughs> let's get it. Let's go. How do you describe your relationship with Joe Budden? I mean, listen. Me and Joe Budden aren't, you know. We're not friends like that. We're not like, we didn't go to the same fucking high school or something. You know what I'm saying? So I get that part. But when I'm out here flying around to different places and doing interviews and trying to use my platform to pump up Slaughterhouse every chance I get, and you're using your platform to fucking trash me. And I'm one of the things that keeps this shit moving. You know what I'm saying? So you're doing something. You got a voice in hip hop. So you actually could be affecting this ship a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't owe me nothing. But I've never got in a fucking interview and been like, Joe Button shit is fucking trash. I said that in the last one. You don't think it's handy food. That's all right. You got it. Um, I said that in the last one though, didn't I? I said Eminem has never got on anything and said anything bad about Joe Button, so Joe Button should have the same respect for him. If you don't like his album, call him. But if you know the position you have in hip hop, which Joe Budden realizes the position that he has, he shouldn't be saying anything about Eminem. Especially on the grounds that Eminem stood up for you when you just came into, when Eminem, not stood up for you, but basically gave you a shout out. You know what I'm saying? Gave you a shout out. And Kayla, you need to smile more. <laughs> gave you a shout out and helped you grow. So let's keep going. What? You need to smile more. Yeah, whatever. Why are you coming to me? That's the last album he put out. It's fucking trash. So that's that's kind of the attitude I took to this whole album. Kamikaze is like, all right, what if I give everybody my opinion about them? Well, look, I want to talk about Slaughterhouse uh, because there's a lot of, including myself, people that really feel like the Slaughterhouse saga was unfinished. Mm -hmm. You know, I know there's a Glasshouse <clears throat> album that was pretty much completed but never released. Right. Where we had left it about two years ago was everybody came in and different some of some of the guys in the group picked certain beats, some of the guys didn't feel those beats or they like the other beats. And it was like there was definitely enough songs to put an album out, but for the most part it wasn't a complete picture because everybody wasn't on the same page of what their favorite songs were. So I thought they were gonna go back go back home, regroup, and try to make a few more songs. I didn't hear anything from that, and then and at that point I started getting really deep into revival. You know, I was recording every day. So, a couple months go by, and from what I understand it to be, what I was told, I didn't hear this firsthand, but okay. Joe said, Slaughterhouse ain't hot right now, we don't have a buzz, we need to put out a mixtape. From that point, everybody started branching out. Royce went and did his album, Prime, like everybody started doing their own kind of solo shit. So yeah. I thought they were just happy with that. You know what I'm saying? Like they just wanted to maybe work on their own projects for a while and we'd come back yeah. and visit this or whatever. When we made the first Slaughterhouse album, The Welcome to Our House, Welcome to Our House, that was another album that I felt like, holy shit, people literally just trashed this. They trashed this album. It was a huge fucking backlash of, oh man, this ain't what we want to hear. It sounds too polished and all that shit. Like, before he says anything else, comment down below some of the songs from that album so we can react to them if you guys want us to react to those songs. But, I wonder if he's going to answer the reason why they trashed this album in this era. Like, again, I keep saying this and I keep, I re I'm reading you guys in the comment section on the last, on the last one you guys said, Look like it's beyond trolling. Listen, it, it's really not. The, the root of everything that is going on here is nothing but pure trolling. Especially when an older dude comes in the game. Because that's how they take M. M is an OG. 
And any of the people that he bring along most of the time are OGs. Slaughterhouse is the dopest rap crew ever, but they're all OGs. So when you, any OG coming to the game, the young crowd is instantly shitting on them. It don't matter what they say. They could they could they could they could come in with the best album that year. The younger crowd is shitting on them. Mm -hmm. Period. 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 And that's just how this era works. This era is nothing but trolls. Everyone is trying to clown somebody. They're never trying to give a true, a truly good, constructive opinion. It's all about clowning people. Let's keep going. Like, you're not listen. You're critiquing these guys who are fucking wordsmiths. I'm, I don't mean to pause it again, but look, like he said, the wordsmiths, Joe Button, Joel Ortiz, Royce the 5'9", um, Crooked Eye, all of them, li most lyrical people you will ever hear get on a record. And literally, I, I kind of saw some of the reviews from that album, people were saying some crazy stuff about that album. The most lyrical, nobody who said anything about Eminem or that album that Slaughterhouse did could even beat Slaughterhouse and, and, and it can, can even go toe to toe with Slaughterhouse and bars. Yeah. Period. Period. Like you going, y'all. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, so you're there's look, there's a certain type of person that, oh man, I like I only like the beats. There's a certain type of person that will lean towards lyrics more. There's a certain type of person that will lean towards a voice more. They like better. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody leans towards towards their own thing, but I was just like, holy shit. Cause to me the beats were crazy on that album. And only thing I did was added my little touch of like sprinkling music in these tracks and mixing them to try to bring out, you know, the production a little bit, um, which I don't even know if I did any actual beats on there on the first album. But but all I heard was the backlash that it was too polished. Yeah. So we said, OK, let's do another album and then you guys do what you want to do with it, which is kind of we left the ball in their court kind of thing. So, I didn't want to touch it in the sense of like, other than give my opinions on songs, I didn't want to touch it I didn't, with my production because I felt like, if, if, what if that is the reason yeah. that they didn't sell albums? I don't want to hinder that, you know what I'm saying? So, we gave him another album and next thing I know I hear Joe talking about who got that money, who, who got what money? Like... He did say, I saw a clip that he put up an interview with him and Crooked that he felt like that maybe, perhaps, like he alluded that you and Paul got majority of the money. There, but, the, but the album, I hate to say this because I think the guys are super fucking talented, but the album didn't do much to even recoup the first budget. Then we spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on the second album that never came out. What money didn't you get? And for my mental midgets out there, because there's going to be some mental midgets. There's going to be some mental midgets because Joe Button has a lot of fans. And there's nothing wrong with Joe Button, but for my mental midgets out there, basically what he's saying is that they put an album out. He put all the money, all the time, all the effort into their album coming out, right? And the album did nothing. The album recuperated nothing. In business, you could put a bunch of money into a product, but if the product don't sell, the product don't sell. There ain't no paying a whole employee, a group of employees if the product don't sell. It don't, it just don't work that way. It just don't work that way. And I remember Joe Budden saying something like that. He felt like Eminem took all the money and I think it was Paul Rosenberg. I think that was the other dude's name, but they took all the money. And it's like, if the album didn't sell, what money did they take? Like, and I just want, I just wanted to say that because I know there's some mental midgets out there that'll be like, yeah, right. It probably did sell and you taking the money. No, it probably didn't. It probably didn't. <laughs> Emma's, pro Emma's rich enough. And it's rich enough, but let's keep hearing what he's talking about. I don't know if I made a fucking dime off Slaughterhouse. I don't care if I made nothing. I believed in them. So I, you know, I wanted them to, I wanted them to be huge, man. I really did. I, I wanted a group that lyrical to fucking just bust through everything. You know what I'm saying? And it definitely hurt my feelings a lot when the album didn't do good. The first album, it was just like fuck, man. Like when when, when we got CeeLo on the hook and it, uh, my life song, I was like, yo, this is this might be out of here. What, what was the meaning behind the line when you said the last hit? You, I mean, I'm paraphrasing. The last hit you got was with your ex chick. <laughs> that was what that was. What's that? That was a tap. Just a tap. It was a tap, but it was also saying that that his his uh. 
<laughs> alleged domestic abuse uh -huh. things or whatever, which I'm not gonna get into. But but I feel like I like random movies. I feel like the reason I had to do that is because, like I said, there's a there's a there's a fine line between saying, you know what, this guy's really been cool to me. He's helped me out and tried to help out on many occasions. So I'm not gonna go in on untouchable like that. I'm gonna say it ain't for me. I'm not crazy about it, whatever, whatever. But to, to be the worst song you've ever heard in your life, have you listened to your own shit? Do you not listen back? Because if that's the worst fucking song you've ever heard in your life, Argument in the comment section. I'm gonna start one. Tell me, was Revival worse than Rage Against the Machine? I think that's what it was called. It was called Rage Against the Machine, the album that Joe that Joe Button dropped right before he dropped Revival. Rage Against the Machine was trash. Argue with me in the comment section. Argue with me in the comment section. That al that album was trash. It didn't even. I don't even remember if it did good. But argue with me in the comment section. Show me the numbers. Maybe he outsold everybody that year with that album. But I think it was called, it was, it was either Rage in the Machine or Rage Against the Machine or something like that. All I'm saying is that album wasn't better than Revival, in my opinion. But give me your opinion in the comment section. I want to know what you think. Let's go. I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting. So we'll never see that Glass House album probably as far as you know. I don't know. I, I, I don't have the answer to that. I uh I I wanna just make it clear though mm -hmm. that aside from the Joe shit, I think that Slaughterhouse is one of the best rap groups ever to ever happen. But that being said, I I, I wish their first album would have connected. Yeah. To more people than it did. I don't, I don't, to this day, I still don't. Me and Paul are like, how, how, what the fuck happened? You know what I'm saying? Like, but look, man, everybody's not gonna like everything you put out all the time. So, that, that was a dream team of MCs, though. And I think a lot to what you're saying um, in regards to why are people reacting to these wordsmith is that's how we came up, you know. And honestly, what people may not realize is that's what really separated hip hop from. R&B, rock and roll, and other genres was our ability to bend words and create patterns that made it unique to our genre specifically, which it seems like it's something that doesn't get any credibility. Uh, or people don't put a whole, not everybody put a whole lot into that. Now, they don't give a lot of credence to that, you know, which is probably um, Slaughterhouse could have been a victim of that, uh, that kind of ideology. Um, you also, in this album, uh, you went in on MGK, you guys had a discrepancy. He mentioned it in his response song, um, Rap Devil, you know, that was called Sway and Ask Him Why I Can't Get On Shade for a Five. That was in um, response, so I seen him on the street once, and I didn't know he couldn't come up to Shade at that time uh, for a five. And I said, man, come on up, man. And then I had to see him again and say, hey, man, I don't know what the shit is, yeah. but until that gets cleared up, there's no way I can have you on there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's the shit with that? What happened? Well, the shit is, yeah. just for the record, the the thing that was going on that he was saying about my daughter, I didn't even know about that until like literally like a year and a half later. Okay. I wasn't, it just, it never hit my radar. And then one day, you know, you go down the fucking wormhole of YouTube and whatever, right? <laughs> so I see... Machine Gun Kelly talks about Eminem's daughter, whatever, right? So, what the fuck? Click on it. Like, yo, why is he... Then he starts doing a, a press run, basically, about Haley. I'm like, what the fuck? Yo, my man better yeah. chill, right? Mm -hmm. So, that's not why I dissed him. The reason I dissed him is actually a lot more petty than that. Okay. The reason that I dissed him is because... He got on, first he said, first first what he said, I, I'm, the, I'm the greatest rapper alive since my favorite rapper banned me from Shade 45 or whatever he said, right? Like I'm trying to hinder his career, so I don't give a fuck about your career. You think I actually fucking think about you? You know how many 
fucking rappers that are, are better than you, you're not even in the fucking conversation. I don't care if you fucking blow or if you don't blow. It doesn't matter to me. But then when you get on Tech Nine's album and you start sending shots and people start hitting me up, yo, Machine Gun dissed you, he just dissed you, he dissed you. I'm like, I listen to it, I'm like, did he really diss me though? I keep listening to it, y'all, this rap, you're not gods. And then somebody sends me a screenshot of his Twitter and it says, had some shit to get off my chest. You just rap, you not God. Some shit like that. And I was like, a reference to the rap gods song? Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, on the song, he said, y'all just rap, you not gods. And on Twitter, he said, you just rap, you not God. Had some shit to get off my chest. And I'm seeing, and by the way, this was on the heels of the freestyle he had just did about Shade 45. It's like, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Now, now I'm in this fucking weird thing because I'm like, I gotta answer this motherfucker. <laughs> and every time I do that, it makes that person as, as irrelevant as people say I am, am in hip-hop. Yeah. I make them bigger by getting into this thing where I'm like, I want to destroy him. But I also don't want to make him bigger. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because Ooh, Imagine like being that, that successful in your life. You have to ask yourself that question. Yeah. <laughs> I want to destroy this person, but I don't want to make him more successful. Mm -hmm. That's crazy to think about. That much power. Like you have that much power to where you can sway influence. I remember reading. The, I remember hearing this one thing. Um, Ar Ab. Remember in that diss when Drake dissed Meek Mill, and he said Ar Ab's name. Go watch that Breakfast Club interview. Ar Ab made a million dollars off Drake just saying his name. Mm, I remember that. That's power, bro. That's power. Let's keep going. Let's keep going, y'all. Let's go. On. Now you're a fucking enemy. Mm. So. I'll leave it at that. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do at this point right now because I'm still kind of waiting to see what. You haven't heard his rap devil response? No, I heard it. What do you think of it? It's, it's not bad for him. Mm -hmm. He has some good lines in it. Did y'all really call Interscope to try to shelve his? Fuck no. I, I ain't never made a fucking call. We made a call to Diddy, really? Yeah. I got Diddy's number. Just hit him up. Yo, Diddy, what up? Never happened. It didn't feel like a diss to me. It just felt like pitiful. Uh, like, ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> now I'm, I'm feeling bad for something I didn't even have to do with. So, that's how that happened. So he made a reply to my reply. So regardless of what the fuck he wants to say, oh, it was from six years ago. Motherfucker. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Wait. I'm telling you the reason I dissed you now. Yeah. I'm telling you. Mm. And I'm going to sit back and I'm going to wait for a second just to see because if people start firing off and I try to answer every fucking body that I dissed on Kamikaze or had words about, I'm going to be going the next five fucking years <laughs> making diss song after diss song. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. like, you're going to get hit, though. Okay. So he didn't diss him because of Haley. He dissed him because he was taking shots. No, he, 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 yeah, I think it was all that together. Yeah. I think that was all that together. And MGK, so MGK kept talking. Mm -hmm. Eminem responded because M MGK kept talking. Like, I don't know, man. I, comment down below who y'all believe. You know what I mean? Because what I saw, like, we'll, we'll, we'll do that interview next, too, if y'all want us to. But what I saw was MGK literally said, MGK is not backing down from what he said. So MGK literally said, like, look, M lied. Like, <laughs> like he he caught somebody, Diddy pulled him in the room and told him, like, look, like, we're going to have to shelf you if you don't stop doing this or stop doing that. Maybe MGK's lying, maybe M's lying, you know what I mean? Or maybe neither one of them are. Maybe, like, Diddy saw, like, you know, because at the end of uh, the, the Kill Shot song, he did say uh, something about I don't know. Actually, I don't got nothing to do with it because this is this this is before he even dropped Kill Shot. Well, no, 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 no. The uh, the interview that MGK did was after he dropped Kill Shot. So never mind. I don't know. I don't know, y'all. Comment down below what y'all think, man. I just feel like you know if y'all want part three, 
Get us to 200 likes. 200 likes. We'll give you part three. We love y'all, man. Stay yeah. tuned to the channel. Thank Stay tuned you so to the much channel. For all your support. Definitely. All right, we're going to get out of here, y'all. Haley, you going to get him out of here? Peace out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Talk to later. You want to talk to him? Okay, go ahead. Actually, you know what? I got to push the button because it's that But you can talk to him. Go ahead. Um, I just really love learning things at school and just Lame. playing outside and enjoying just spilled daddy's noodles. Yeah, he did. How dare you, Julian? <laughs> All right, get him out of here. Oh.